poverty is the worst form of violence. Mahatma Gandhi. Number 10. You don't have savings to last you three months. Having money put aside for a rainy day is important when we need to meet an unexpected expense or have lost our jobs. Financial experts advise us to have at least six months worth of expenses to tide us over in case we are slapped with an unexpected medical bill, a car has quit on us, or we have suddenly been laid off from work. If you don't have any money saved up to help you maintain your lifestyle for at least three months, it's a sign that you're poor. We're not trying to be mean, that's the truth of the matter. And we're educating you so that you know how to start getting out of poverty and earn financial freedom. To have some money to bail you out in case you run into financial trouble, here's what you should start doing today. Start saving a specific amount of money and you'll start your journey to kicking poverty in the butt and acquiring financial freedom. For instance, if you earn $300 a week in wages, save $100 and spend $200. By the end of the month, you'll have saved $400 or more, which equals $4,800 a year. We know that may not sound like much, but great milestones start with the first step. You'll quit poverty and start your journey to financial prosperity. Number 9. You struggle to pay your bills If you have paid bills before, you know how stressful it can be, and what's worse, you have to make those payments or you'll find yourself without electricity or water. But if you struggle to pay those bills, we'll tell you right now that your finances are not healthy. Several bills are mandatory to pay, such as electricity bills, water, and gas and failure to pay these bills will cause you more problems than you already have. For example, if you don't pay your gas bill, the company that supplies you with gas will disconnect it, and you won't have any way to cook your meals. If you want the service reconnected, you may be charged a reconnection fee. And don't even get us started on the problems you would face if your water was shut off. Having difficulties settling your monthly bills signifies poverty, which you can get rid of with proper planning of your money. You can automate your bills such that when money comes to your checking account, the respective companies deduct their bills. This way, you will not have any issues paying your bills, which means they won't be disconnected, and hence, you won't have to spend more money getting them reconnected. Number 8. You have an addiction We've all been addicted to something at one time or another in our lives, whether it was food, shopping, booze, gambling, travel, or any other addiction you may have had. The truth is, it signifies poverty. You may have all the money in the world, but if you spend it to feed your addiction, you're poorer than someone that has nothing. For example, let's say you earn $4,000 a month, but you're a serious gambler. The minute you cash your check, you don't even go home first to see your family. You pass by your favorite gambling den. You're excited because you got cash and are feeling optimistic about winning. You raise your stakes with every play, but lose every time. By the time you go home, you have $2,000 left. Your house rent is $1,200 and utilities cost you $500 a month. This means that you have $300 left to feed your family and use as transport. And because it's not enough, you have to tap into your credit card, which is how you start accumulating debt. Poverty isn't just experienced by someone that doesn't have money. You could have money but be as poor as a church mouse because of your lifestyle choices. To stay away from poverty, work on managing your addictions. If you can't do without the $5 Starbucks coffee, change the route. You'll save $35 by the end of the week. Have an accountability partner that you'll answer to. An addiction will slowly fade, and you'll be in a position to save your money and kick poverty. Number 7. You're living paycheck to paycheck. No one likes to be poor. We all want to be able to afford the things we want without worrying about the financial dent we are creating. There is nothing as stressful as having to wait for your next paycheck to come in so you can fulfill your financial obligations. This is because should your money get depleted before the month is over, you're in trouble. For example, if you earn a monthly income of $2,500, your house rent is $900, utilities $500, groceries $400, transport $300, and that's a total of $2,100. This means that you have $400 to survive until your next paycheck, not to mention you haven't saved a dime. This is a sign that you're poor because you have no money saved and have to use everything before the new month rolls over. Living paycheck to paycheck can be stressful, but you can change that by finding other ways to make extra cash to help you save for a rainy day and stop living paycheck to paycheck. We're certain you don't want to stay poor for the rest of your life, do you? Number 6. Your income dictates your lifestyle Some people live the lifestyle they want, and some are dictated by their finances. 
If you're in the category where your lifestyle is dictated by your money, it's a sign of being poor. Having money dictate your lifestyle is a situation where you are waiting for your paycheck to come in so that you can fulfill a certain obligation. For example, if you have to wait for your money to come in so that you can repair your kitchen faucet, your money is dictating your lifestyle. Also, if you can't take your family out to a nice dinner because you have no money to splurge a little on your loved ones, that means money is dictating your lifestyle, which is a sign of being poor. We're not saying that you should spend money recklessly when you have it and eat out five days a week, but having a nice day out with the family without waiting for your paycheck to mature means you have matured financially. Number five, it takes you more time to get to work. Time is money, and the rich will tell you that they don't waste time. This is because they know that they'll lose a lot of business that way. And while this may seem like a trivial matter, it is crucial because, as we said earlier, time is money. If it takes you more than one hour to get to work, it's a sign of deficiency in your finances. For example, if you have to be at work by 8 a.m. and commute for two hours to get to work, it means you have to leave your house at 6 a.m., which means you have to get up as early as 4 a.m. It might take you longer when you factor in traffic and bad weather sometimes. This means that instead of doing other things that can help you grow, you have to spend all of your time getting ready for work and commuting. Not to mention you'll get to work tired. This makes you unproductive, which means you don't get considered for promotion or employee benefits, which keeps you perpetually poor. This time-wasting mechanism is why you've never been able to find ways to earn more money or open your own business. To help you break this poverty cycle, you can move to a house that's near your workplace. Then wake up at the same time you were when you lived far from work and use those two extra hours to build something financially beneficial to your future. Number four, you struggle to settle your debts. There are four things every person has more of than they know. Sins, debt, years, and foes. No, we didn't say that. It's a Persian proverb. We don't know about your sins or foes, but we know that debt can keep you poor and struggling to pay it back is a sign of poverty. Wealthy people are debt-free and use the money they have saved to complete their projects instead of borrowing from banks or credit institutions. If you struggle to pay your debt, we can tell you right now that you are paying more than you borrowed because the longer you take to pay your debt back, the higher your interest gets. For example, if your income could not see you through to the month and you still had groceries to buy and had to use your credit card, you have started carrying a balance that you're expected to pay at the end of your billing cycle. For instance, if you spend $150, which you will have to repay after 30 days at an 18% interest, and minimum payments of $35 per month, it'll take you five months to complete your repayments, and your total interest will be $6.20. While this may seem like a small amount to pay, the more you take, the higher the interest, and the more you will struggle to clear the balance. This keeps you poor and borrowing and getting yourself out of that financial rut becomes nearly impossible unless you make drastic changes to your finances and daily lifestyle. To keep poverty away, pay all your debts and stay away from credit cards. It will keep your money in your bank account. Number three, you're always buying low-cost products. Now, we're not saying that buying cheap things means that you're poor, but always looking for low-cost products is a sign of poverty because some of the local products are of poor quality, which wouldn't last you a long time and you're most likely buying them because you can't afford better quality products. For example, if your mattress is so worn out that you wake up more tired than when you went to sleep, it means that it's time to buy a new mattress. A durable mattress can cost anywhere from $800 and can last you a few years without dipping. But if you go to the section that sells $300 mattresses, it's because you cannot afford the $800 one. And we all know the cheaper mattresses don't last long. While there's nothing wrong with buying cheaper mattresses, you spend more than you would if you buy a durable mattress. This is because after a few months, you have to start looking for money to buy another mattress. This is because your $300 one has started dipping and is seriously punishing your ribs. This may push you into spending money meant for something else or even into debt. Number two, you rely on government aid. If you rely on food stamps, disability, welfare, and other government aid, it is a sign that you're poor. This is because you're not making any income to help you get by, and if you are, it's not enough to allow you to stand on your feet without getting extra help. This is by no means to say that it's a bad thing to rely on government help. We all need a little help sometimes, and if the government is willing to step in, it means it cares for its citizens. 
But sometimes government aid takes time to reach the citizens, and you might be in a tight spot, which can spell financial trouble. To stop relying on someone else, find things you can do that will generate income. You can only ask for help for so long, and when it stops coming in, you're doomed. Before we get into number one, make sure to check out the links in the description for our best recommendations to boost your savings. Number one, you can't get by without taking a loan. Taking loans to help you get by is a sign that you're poor. This is because your paycheck is not enough to see you through to the end of the month. No one borrows money for kicks. We do it because we don't have any other option. For instance, it's the middle of the month and you have $200 remaining, and it's not enough for you to get by until the new month rolls over. So what do you do? You look for ways to get more money, right? If you have no savings or a second income that's helping you make ends meet, you'll go to a lender and borrow some cash. This means that when you get your paycheck, you'll take a chunk of the money and pay back the lender. And the cycle starts all over again. Being indebted to someone or some company is the worst form of prison someone can ever be in, except, of course, an actual prison with deplorable living conditions and near-death experiences almost daily. To escape this debt cycle, find more ways to earn an extra dollar to help with your financial obligations. You'll be free of debt, and you won't have to duck behind the bushes when you see a lender coming towards you. Make sure to check out the next video. You're going to get a ton of value from this one. See you there.